This program is brought to you by realestate.com.au, Australia's number one address in property. With more properties for sale than anywhere else, we make it easier. Thanks for being with us here on Business Now. And having talked earlier about interest rates, more investors seem to be jumping in to the property markets ahead of the suspected eventual fall in rates, whenever that might be. Now, nationally across the weekend, there were 1,264 auctions. That's higher than the previous week with a clearance rate of 62.8%. You can see there in Sydney, 445 auctions. The clearance rate here is higher, 64.5%. But look, it was better in Melbourne where there were 477 auctions. That's higher than the previous week because of the end of school holidays there. Plus the clearance rate, you can see 70.4%. In Brisbane, there were just 60 auctions. The clearance rate here just under... 57% in Adelaide, 48 auctions. The clearance rate just under 71%. And in Canberra, just 31 auctions. A clearance rate there of 61.3%. Joining me now, Anne Flaherty, economist at REA Group. Anne, always good to chat to you. I mean, it seems as though people are kind of getting into the markets ahead of any rate rises, rate falls rather, that might come, even though that might be 12 months away. Well, we are starting to see signs of activity picking up in the market. We did see listings largely steady between May and June, but over the coming couple of weeks, we're actually going to see nearly 2,000 auctions across Australia. Now, winter is typically the quietest time of year, but actually we haven't seen that much of a drop compared to the um, Easter period and the spring and the winter period this year. OK, it's going to be fascinating just to see the way this plays out, though, because clearly there's not one property market. There's lots and lots of property markets affected by a range of things. You and I often talk about it. It can be population, it can be new developments, whatever it might be. Regional areas, we know, have had a really big move over these past few years as well. People have gone to the regions, and really that's just a fuel to demand in those places. It's so true. We always talk about the property market as though it's just one market. But of course, across states, across regions, even at a suburb level, prices behave in a very, very different way. And what we've seen is that there are many areas around Australia that haven't even seen price falls over the past 12 months. There are certain areas, particularly in South Australia and Western Australia, where property prices never fell and some of which have even seen double digit price growth just over the past 12 months. Yeah, been, been a big catch up in WA, and that's a resources boom-led thing as much as anything else. It generally goes well when the commodity markets are going well. South Australia, to a certain extent, has been a recovery story as well. Yeah, and we are seeing property prices in Greater Perth, in Greater Adelaide as well, at peak levels. So they're at the highest levels ever seen. And it's not just those resources areas that are benefiting. We're also seeing this in other regions of SA and WA that are appealing to that sort of lifestyle appeal. You know, within around two hour drive time of a capital city, but they're very scenic and they're drawing a lot of buyers. OK, just a quick one for you. Does that mean that there's pressure on or off the rental markets in those cities as well? Well, there's certainly pressure on the rental markets in those cities. We're seeing this across Australia. The national vacancy rate was sitting at just about 1.4% which is, you know, around half of what it was pre-COVID. So most markets saw the vacancy rates sort of stay steady over the past month. But, you know, compared to a year ago, they're really down in most markets. Yeah, good to have you on the program as always, Anne. Many thanks for your time today. Thank you.